Welcome back to Kingdom Kids. Today we're going to continue in our series on the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 tells us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And as we abide in Christ and grow in our relationship with Him, the fruit of the Spirit grows in us and overflows out of us. These characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit are the outward display of the Spirit at work in our lives. So that when others look at our lives, they'll see the Spirit at work and they will see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today we're going to look at the characteristic of gentleness. What do you think of when you hear the word gentleness? You might think of something soft and cuddly, maybe something that's fragile, or maybe it's when you're petting an animal, holding a baby, playing with your younger siblings, and you hear, be gentle. Maybe you think about gentleness as holding back or liken it to weakness because you're told to be gentle when you're playing and you have to hold back your strength. Gentleness is being loving and tender and calm and humble in words and actions. It's the opposite of being harsh or mean. It's being meek. Remember this from the Beatitudes. Meekness means strength under control or power under constraint. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Think about how true this is in your life. If someone answers you gently rather than harshly, how do you feel? Gentle words can calm, but harsh words stir up anger. Jesus was strong and bold in his actions, but he was gentle. He showed God's love and his quiet strength. Gentleness is a, is a trait that quietly shows the power of God's love. He gave us ears to hear, eyes to see, arms to serve, and mouths to confess the glory and love of our Lord. Jesus is the gentle expression of God's love. Sunday mornings we've been currently studying Psalm 23, and we're learning about our Good Shepherd and how he loves for us and takes care of us. Turn to page 130 in your Jesus Storybook Bible if you'd like to follow along for our story today. The Good Shepherd. David was a shepherd, but God looked at him and he saw a king. Sure enough, when David grew up, that is just what he became. And David was a great king. He had a heart like God's heart, full of love. Now that didn't mean he was perfect, because he did some terrible things. He even murdered a man. No, David made a big mess of his life. But God can take even the biggest mess and make it work in his plan. I need a new heart, Lord, David prayed, because mine is full of sin. Make me clean inside. God heard David's prayer. He forgave David, and he made David a promise. I will make you great, David, and one day a king will be born into your family, and he will heal the whole world. Did you know that David was a songwriter, too? In fact, his songs were so good, they might have been in the top 40 charts, if they had been invented yet. David's songs are like prayers. They are called psalms, and this one's called the Song of the Shepherd. And it goes like this. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me. He guides me. He looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in the soft green grass, in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid, because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He's getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me, everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness, I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go to. God gave David that song to sing to his people so they could know that he loved them and he would always look after them, like a shepherd loves his sheep. And one day, God was going to do something that would inspire thousands upon thousands of new songs. God was going to show his people once and for all just how much he loved them. Another shepherd was coming, a greater shepherd. He would be called the Good Shepherd. And this shepherd, 
was going to lead all of God's lambs back to the place where they had always belonged, close to God's heart. We have a good and gentle shepherd who loves us and cares for us. He provides for us. Matthew 11, 28-30 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus calls the tired, the weary, the suffering, and he gently leads us as a shepherd would lead his sheep. He protects us. He gives us constant protection and guidance. He teaches us how to be gentle. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for your love for us, for your grace towards us. You are a good and gentle shepherd. You lead us, you care for us, and you guide us. You are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You forgive us, you are patient and kind to us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. We confess that we are not always gentle. We answer harshly instead of out of love. Help us, Lord, to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, Lord. Help us to respond out of love and truth. We pray that you will continue to grow, that we'll continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of you, and that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control would overflow from our lives for those around us to see and that they would also come to know you as their Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.